Joshua 24 and verse 15. In Joshua 24, verse 15, I want you to notice what it says. This is one of the great verses that, that uh, we are all familiar with. It says, and, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua makes it very clear who's, he's, who's, uh, he's going to serve. But then he goes on, and I want you uh, then to jump over to verse 19, where he picks up. And it says, And Joshua said unto the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins if ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods when he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after that he hath done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourself, that ye have chosen you the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now let's jump to verse 26, continuing on with this account of Joshua. And Joshua wrote, these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone and set it up there under an oak uh, and, uh, that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said unto all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us, for it hath heard all the words of the Lord which he spoke unto us. It shall be therefore a witness unto you, lest ye deny your God. Here, Joshua starts out by saying that he will choose to serve God. As for me and my house, he says in verse 15, I'm going to serve God. My family is going to serve God. And then, he turned to the people and he said, now, if you're going to serve God, you can't, you can't serve two gods. You've got to choose which, which you're going to serve. Are you going to serve my God? Or are you going to serve the gods of the Amorites? Are you going to serve the gods of the, of the people over there on the other side of the river? Are you going to serve all those, those little G's, those gods, that all of those evil people. Which one are you going to? As for me and my house, we're going to serve God, the God. But which are you going to serve? You can't serve both. And the people said, we're going to serve the Lord. Joshua said, okay, but you're a witness. Everybody here is a witness that you said you were going to serve the God. You're going to serve the Lord. And they all said, oh yes, yes, let it be a witness that we're going to serve the Lord. You see, these people had, had a history so far all through the time of Moses of, of serving everything but God. They served all the, all the little gods of the of the wilderness. They served all the other little gods of all these people that they had come in contact with. It was easy always for these people to serve all those other gods, but they didn't want to serve the God, Jehovah God, because he had rules. He had laws. He had, he had all of his writings and and he had the Ten Commandments. He had all of these things that had been written. And Moses had written all the laws. Remember, the book of Leviticus had been written. All the laws that he said, you people have to live by. Well, 
they didn't want to live by it. They wanted to live by what the little gods were allowing them to do, and that was anything that you wanted to do. And Joshua says, as for me and my house, we're going to serve God. But as for you, you better make up your mind what you're going to do. And they said, oh, we want to serve God, the God, Jehovah God. And he says, okay, but you're a witness. Everybody's a witness. You said it. And then something I thought was interesting, and this is where I want to take my my, my sermon tonight in verse 26. It says, And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone and set it up there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said, verse 27, unto all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us. He says, for it has heard all the words of the Lord, which he spake unto us. It shall be, therefore, a witness unto you, lest you deny your God. So he says, the stone is a witness. The stone heard everything. The stone heard God's word. The stone heard what you said. And the stone is a witness. I take my my message tonight from that, that thought right there. And I, I entitled my message, The Statue Under the Oaks. It says that this, this monument was put up under the oaks over there by the sanctuary. And under those oaks, under those trees, they Joshua had, a, had this monument built out of stone. And he says that that stone is a witness. That stone heard everything. That stone heard the word of God. That stone heard what everybody said. And he said that stone is a witness. And you know, you don't think about a stone being a witness. But a, but a, but a monument is. That's what it is. A monument is a, a witness of, of what has taken place. It is a witness to the history that took place there. It's a witness of what's been said. You can, you know, it, it says that this stone was a witness. Why, why, why was the stone the witness? Why not the people were a witness? Well, he said, he said to begin with, uh, he said, he said, you people are a witness to what you said. But then Joshua put a stone there and he says, that stone is the witness of all that you said and all that you did. And you know, the, when I begin to think about why a stone was a witness and why not the people, I realize that, that people, people change whatever you tell them. P people, you can tell somebody something and, and within a short period of time, They'll, they'll turn it around. Uh, within a short period of time, people will say, well, you, you, you say, well, you know, it, it's going to be high tide at 1030. And then somebody's going to show up later and say, now you said it was going to be low tide at 1030. They say, no, I said it was going to be high tide at 1030. And they'll say, no, you didn't. No, you said it was going to be low tide at 1030. And they'll sit there and argue with what you have. And, and people will turn things around. I've found out over the years that people will twist things according to what they want to hear. People will hear sometimes what they want to hear, and we all know that. And that people will change things that you said, and they'll twist it around. People sometimes will just outright lie about what you said. Oh, no, you didn't say that. No, 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 I, I heard, I know what I heard, and you said this. And then I've also found out that, that people sometimes, people just will, will change things around, and they will intentionally lie. And their philosophy is, if I lie about it long enough, you'll begin to question whether or not you actually said that. Oh, no, you never said that. And then all of a sudden you begin thinking, well, maybe I didn't say that. And it, you know, there's some politics.
politicians that have made a career out of lying. And their philosophy is very clearly, if I lie enough, people are going to start believing me. And if I keep lying, then people are going to start saying, well, maybe I just don't understand. Maybe I made the mistake. And so that's the way. But you know what? People will lie. People will change it. People will turn it around. They'll twist it. But the one thing you can't change is what's engraved in a stone. Because once it's engraved in a stone, it's there. That's what the people thought. That's what the people said. That's what, that's what was actually done because it was engraved in that stone and the people that were there saw it and the people that were there read it and the people that were there, when they walked away, they knew that, yes, that's what was said. That's what we believed. That was what was done because it was engraved in that stone and there was no way to change it. It was in that stone. And you can't go back and undo what's engraved in that stone. Ten Commandments were engraved in a rock. And those tablets, when they came down, that what God wrote in those stones were written in that stone. And whether you liked it or not, that's what was written. And that's, that's what a stone is a witness of. A stone is the fact that that's what it was. You know, a lot of people that we've seen in the news lately, we've seen where monuments have been toppled and monuments have been torn down because people didn't like it. And people have, all these people have had reasons and all the reasons why they disliked the monument. What was interesting about every monument so far that I've been able to research that has been toppled and, and torn down and broken and defaced, just every one of them had something in common. And it was not what everybody said it was. What they had in common was God's Word. Somewhere on those monuments was a quote from the Word of God. And if you think about it, one of the reasons, probably the main reason why, they'll say all the reasons why they wanted to topple it down, but behind everything there's always a, an ultimatum that has been put out there, and that is we've got to topple God's Word. We've got to destroy the Word of God. We've got to get rid of what's on that monument, not because of the lifestyle of that person, but what was written on that stone had to go. It was the Word of God. And this, this monument right here, notice what was written on that monument. It says, Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God. And took a great stone and set it up under those oaks. And he said that that stone was a witness. Notice he says, and Joshua said unto, in verse 27, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us, for it has heard all the words of the Lord. That's the thing that it had in common. It, that's what it had. It had heard the word of God. It didn't matter anything else that it had heard. It had heard the word of God. And that's what made that monument powerful, was the fact that it had heard the word of God. People, people are not good witnesses because they can change. You can put a person on the witness stand, and a lawyer can twist everything around, and before you know it, you begin to, they all, they say, well, are you absolutely sure? Have you... Did you see this? Did you see that? And they'll twist around. And what you saw all of a sudden doesn't seem to be powerful because of, the, of an attorney that knew how to twist everything around. But the one thing you can't twist around is the Word of God. And this monument had heard the Word of God. People can be manipulated. People can be twisted the things that they believe and the things that they say can be changed, but the one thing that can't be changed is what's engraved in those rocks. It's there. 
it's it's in it's etched into that stone, and you can't change those letters because they're carved into that rock. That monument, this stone stood strong upon a foundation. This monument right there, it couldn't be moved because it was big, it was solid. It, you could not you could not change what was engraved in it. It's exactly what took place. It's fact. It's truth. It actually happened. People were there. They saw it. They looked at it. They saw the engraving. The monument is proof that there were people there that saw it. They believed it. And it stood for something that they believed in. And, it, and they you could not change it because the letters were engraved in stone. So that monument was, was an example of the mindset of the people that were there. And that's what a, mo a monument stands as a witness. That's why he said the stone is a witness. The stone is what the witness should be. So what did, what did the stone witness? What did the stone see and witness? Well, look in verse 15, if you would, in verse 15. It says in verse 15, it says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whom land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Notice Joshua said, you have chosen to serve the gods at different places. But as for me and my family, we will serve our God. And, and I want us to understand here that the stone here is a witness to those who will serve God. It says that, that Joshua says, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This stone was a witness to those who would serve God. And that's what, that's what a witness is, is that there is a witness out there on whether or not we chose to serve God. There is a witness out there that, that stands as a monument that says, there was a time in your life that you made a decision that you were going to serve God. There's a monument out there. It's written in God's Word. He has a book up there in which your name is written in it, and it's a monument. It cannot be moved. The letters are etched in stone up there in heaven, and it cannot be changed. You made a decision one day in your life that, that you had chosen to serve God. As for me and my house, we, as, as Joshua said, we will serve the Lord. At some point in time, you made that decision. You're sitting in here tonight, and there was a time in your life that you came to the Lord, and you said, Lord, I need salvation. I need to be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. There was a time in your life that you looked about and sought forgiveness. There was a time that you repented of being a lost person. There was a time in your life that you asked the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Savior. And you know what? The, the, like a monument, that the letters are etched in stone and cannot be changed, your life is etched in God's book and it cannot be changed. There's a monument in heaven called the Lord's Book and in that, the, uh, the, the Lamb's Book of Life, you are etched in that book. You are written in that book. And no one can take your name out of that book. Nothing can be changed out of that book. You are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. And, and nothing can change that. That monument is, is something that you cannot go back on. You cannot change. Just like whatever's etched in a monument, sitting in a square, sitting in a park, sitting in a in a, a, a place somewhere in a city or in a, 
uh, in, in a town somewhere there is a monument that is sitting there that has something etched in it, something written in it. You can't go back and undo what's written in that stone. Listen, you can tear the monument down, you can break it into pieces, but you'll never change the words that were etched in that thing. You'll never change the words that were carved into that stone. Because what was written into that stone is etched in stone forever and ever. You can break the monument, you can topple it down, but what's written in it will always be written in it. It's always there. Because, because what's engraved in stone is permanent. And the Lamb's Book of Life is a monument in heaven that your name is etched in that can never be removed and can never be changed. You can't go back. You can't go back and say, I want to give up my salvation. It's etched in God's Lamb's book. It's etched in there. Something else that I find about the stone. Not only, first of all, that the stone is a witness to those who will serve God. But I also want you to remember what was written in verse 20. And in verse 20 it said, if ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after that he hath done you good. He did good, but you, you denied. You denied. Listen, the stone is a witness of those who reject God. The, the stone is a witness to those who reject God. Not only is it a witness of those that, that have accepted God, but it's also a witness to those who reject God. This stone is a picture of the truth. It's a picture of what was engraved in it. And if your name is not engraved in the Lamb's Book of Life, it's not there. It's not, there's nothing you can do about it. And it's if you And it says in verse 20 that if you deny God, he will deny you. It says if, if you forsake the Lord and serve strange God, then he will turn and do you hurt. If you deny God, he will deny you. If you turn from God, then he will turn from you. You know that the Bible says there is a sin unto death. You know, we've, we've heard that term and a lot of people don't really understand uh, that, that term, but there is only one sin unto death. There's only one sin that God will not forgive. All other sins God will forgive, but there's one sin that God will never forgive. And he calls it the sin unto death. If you look, if you, if you want to, if you will, please to turn in your Bible to 1 John. Let's look at it. What, what God said about this sin. 1 John. 1 John chapter 5. If you look at 1 John chapter 5 and in verse, in verse 16, 1 John, all the way at the end, chapter 5, verse 16, he says in, in 1 John 5, 16 and, and 17, he says, he says in verse 16, if any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. That is, you can sin any kind of sin and, and if you try to go to that person and get them saved, if you try to get them to repent, uh, then, then, then God will forgive them. It, then he says this in the last part of verse 16, there is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. You know you can't pray for that sin unto death. It, it, it doesn't do any good because it's a sin. Notice in verse 17, all unrighteousness is sin. And there is a sin not unto death. So, if, if someone sins, he starts out by saying, if somebody sins against God, you can pray for them. If somebody makes a, does a sin against God, you can pray that they would repent, that they would come
come to the Lord, that they would truly seek uh, salvation or they would truly seek forgiveness. 1 John 1, 9, that, that, that you can repent of sin and he'll forgive you. He says you can pray for them, but he says there is a sin that you, that you cannot pray for, and that's called the sin uh, unto death. Now, why is it that you can't pray for a person that has sinned the sin unto death? And that's because it's too late. That they've already, they've already passed from here into the eternal hell. They're already gone. And their sin, their sin unto death was the rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when they die, and they have rejected the Lord Jesus Christ, it does not do you any good to pray for them. They're in hell. And therefore, your prayer is not going to be answered because they, de they denied the Lord, they rejected the Lord Jesus Christ, they went into hell, and your prayer will not be answered. Look, if you would, uh, to in Matthew. Go, go now. Uh, to the book of Matthew chapter 12. Let's look at Matthew chapter 12. First John told us that there is a sin unto death and there's no need in trying to pray for it because it's too late. Now in, in Matthew chapter 12, verse 31, Matthew 12, 31, notice what it says. This is Jesus speaking. He says in verse 31, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but, uh, that but, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto man. So all sin is forgivable but one, that sin unto death. And it's called here the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Now, what does the Holy Ghost do? What does is, what is the Holy Ghost do? The Holy Ghost points people to Jesus Christ. And so if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, what you're saying is, I will not accept your belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. I will not accept I will not believe. I will not follow you. The Holy Ghost tries to point people to Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Savior of the world. But when you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, you are telling the Holy Ghost, I do not want Jesus Christ. And therefore, that is an unforgivable sin. Look in verse 32. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man it shall be forgiven him. That is, you can talk against Jesus Christ and it can be forgiven. That is, there's a lot of people that have, that have even cursed the Lord Jesus Christ and they were forgiven. You can speak against George, uh, Jesus Christ and be forgiven. How are you forgiven? When you repent and accept Christ as your Savior. But, notice the next one, but, Whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. When you speak against the Holy Ghost, you are saying, I reject the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you reject the Lord Jesus Christ and die and go into hell, that is the sin that will never be forgiven. That sin, your choice, that you, that you chose not to believe in Christ and you died and did not know Jesus Christ, then that you are signed, sealed, and delivered into hell and you'll never be able to come back out of it. You see, it was engraved in stone. It's engraved there. The stone, number one, is a monument that it's engraved in that stone of those that believe in God. And also, in the monument, there is those that reject the Lord Jesus Christ. The stone is a witness to those that believe in Christ. It's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And the stone is a witness to those that have rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's 
because you are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So this stone right here that Joshua is talking about, this stone is a stone that, that is a monument that tells us the truth. If the words are engraved in it, those that believe and those that reject. Those that believe are accepted and written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and those that reject are void. They're not in the Lamb's Book of Life. So I'm glad that there is a monument that the world cannot tear down. There's a monument that's written up in heaven, and you're engraved in it, and nobody can take you out of the Lamb's Book of Life, and nobody can force God to put their names in the Lamb's Book of Life. It all comes with your acceptance or denial of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your blessings. We thank you for all that you've done for us. Lord, just be with us tonight. And Lord, help us, dear God, as we, as we come to, to this close, that we could get a safe journey back home. Be with each person here tonight and protect everybody as they head back. And Lord, we'll thank you for it. We'll thank you for all of your blessings. We'll thank you for all that you've done for us. And we thank you, dear God, that you love us uh, no matter what. And Lord, that we are truly sealed in that Lamb's book of life. Thank you for loving us that much. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you for being here tonight. Thank you for coming. And uh,